Aloha, and welcome to this episode of the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. My guest today was born in Winsboro, South Carolina, where he started music at a young age, getting his start in the church choir. This trombonist, producer, and vocalist has shared the stage with many great artists to include Gerald Albright, Shaka Khan, the Clark Sisters, and the late Aretha Franklin. The list definitely goes on. I am happy to have him here with me today. Let's find out more about this man and his trombone. Let's welcome Mr. Hank Bailao to the show. Aloha, Hank, how are you? Doing good, how about yourself? I am well. First of all, I wanna thank you so much for being here because you are in South Carolina, right? So it's yeah. still nice and sunny over here. And, and where you are, it's, it's almost your bedtime, right? It's good and dark, yeah. <laughs> it's good and dark. Well, thank you again so much. Uh, for being here. So we're just going to, we're just going to get started. So how did you get started in music? Well, just like most uh, musicians, uh, you know, in the church or whatnot, uh, the first thing I ended up doing was singing on the, on a youth choir as a kid. Um, and, you know, and uh, from there, uh, eventually I got into playing different instruments, uh, like the trombone, uh, the piano, uh, and you know, I, I was I was definitely I was really involved in the church. Um, I was in everything from you know the keyboard player to the you know minister of music and you know the a, a lead being a lead person in the church as far as uh, music is concerned. And you know, uh, it, it ran in my family, and you know, just me being surrounded by music my whole life. And my dad, you know, uh, he was traveling with the groups, playing the drums and stuff. I used to travel with him as a kid. You know, I got a chance to see, you know, what the music world, a little taste of the music world, you know, as as a youngin. Nice, nice. So I know you had some fun out there on the road with your dad, right? Yeah, definitely. Now you attended a an HBCU. Yep, um, HBCU. Uh, and it was Benedict. You attended Benedict, Benedict College. College. Benedict mm -hmm. College. Now, you know, I'm a lover of HBCU. Because I'm an HBCU grad from Hampton University. So mm -hmm. um, what was your major at Benedict? Music performance. Music performance. So, you know, I know you were in the marching band at Benedict. I definitely was. That's how I got there. <laughs> huh? I said, that's how, that's how I got there. That's how you got here. And I want to stress to my audience, if you get a chance, you need to go on to YouTube because he also has a brother that's phenomenal <laughs> like him. Um, that attends Benedict College, right? He's following in your footsteps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, are you doing music full time now, or are you? Because you know how some people, you have some artists that have a full time job, right? And then they do mm -hmm. music on the side, and then you have some that do music full time. What are you doing? Well, um, well, first of all, hats off to anybody that can work a nine to five <laughs> and then do a gig on the weekend. First off. Um, you know, um, well, as far as what I'm doing, um, uh, I'm a music teacher part time at a, at a Catholic school. It's predominantly a black Catholic school. Okay. It's actually in the same neighborhood with two HBCUs. Oh. So, um, so I teach, I teach at a at a Catholic school right between Benedict College and Allen University. It, it was called the Waverly Place Community in Columbia. Uh -huh. I, I, I've been doing that every Tuesday and Thursday for the last seven years, going to my eighth school year now. Um, I do that, and I also, I'm also a minister of music in a church. Um, and I, I'm the piano player for um, the St. Martin de Porres Catholic Church. So I'm employed with the school and the church. Uh, so I'm doing the school on every Tuesday and Thursdays, rehearsing with the choir on Wednesdays and doing church uh, for, uh, for an hour on Sundays. Uh, at 1130 and occasionally occasionally a nine o'clock or eight o'clock service every once in a while uh, but you know I, I, I'm a piano player uh, just as well as a trombone player uh, I've been playing piano for like maybe 15 years now wow. I taught myself yeah and I taught myself how to play um, I, ne I never got a chance to get lessons I always wanted lessons uh, but just never had a chance or whatever uh, so I just decided to teach myself and um, and um, I, I got better and better and better at it. So uh, I'm playing the piano just as much as I'm playing the trombone uh, 
today. Nice. Now I wanna, I wanna touch back on uh, Benedict College and mm -hmm. um, the marching band and, or you know, your band experience at Benedict and mm -hmm. being at HBCU. Um, how did being in the band at Benedict help you to where you are now? Because you know, well, I, and I say this because bands at HBCUs are different from other bands. So I agree. Exactly. So how did that? How did? How was that? How was that for you? Um, maybe um, you know, it, it helped me in different ways as far as um, endurance. Uh, I could say first and foremost, and also um, you know, just that go go get them spirit and that, that go get them mentality that you know we had on the marching band. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, I applied it as a musician till this day, you know, and, uh, and, you know, with, with a little bit of competitiveness, you know, you know, just being, you know, learning that from the band as well. And, you know, um, just, you know, just overall those things and, you know, and also our song selection as well, definitely song selection. Uh, a lot of songs that I'm playing to this day, I played on the marching band, you know, we did, you know, of course we did songs by, you know, Frankie Beverly and Maze, Earth, Wind and Fire, you know, uh, you know, some of the more current artists as well. So, you know, just all those things, you know, um, you know, I guess uh, contribute to me being the player that, that I am today. Nice. Now, did you um, join any organizations while you were um, at the HBCU at Benedict College? Oh, yeah, I joined uh, Kappa Kappa Psi, the honorary marching band, uh, well, honorary band fraternity. Uh, you know, uh, specializing in whatever kind of bands, marching bands, jazz bands, uh, you know, different, different, uh, or different uh, ensembles. Uh, you know, I did that in 2012, the Miro chapter at Benedict College, which was the beta chapter of KK Psy. Uh, it was relatively new because um, we, we had, uh, the it was just chartered in 2010, actually. Oh. And, um, and, and that we, we had a final line, then we had an alpha line, and that was part of the, the, the beta line. And so two years after it was established at Benedict College, uh, I, I, I joined. And, um, you know, we, we, had a, we had a lot of relatively new things. You know, we, I, I guess we kind of relatively new HBCU, you can kind of say, you know, things that other people had access to. We are now getting access to now. So, uh, you know, with that being said, you know, from, it's from, from the fraternities, to the different, you know, you know, restaurants on campus now. So now, you know, Benedict is now it's definitely now a full, you know, full time HBCU. You get a full time HBCU experience at Benedict. And by the way, the marching band program isn't that old. The marching band program dates back to ninety eight. Oh wow! Well, well, the Benedict College Band of Distinction uh, uh, dates back to nineteen ninety eight. So we're we're relatively new and um. You know, and within those years of them being established, they got a chance to go to Honda Bell of the bands. Uh, you know, it was a couple of years after I left, unfortunately, but uh, but I'm glad they to see the progress in 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 my HBCU in general. All right, now, what would you define as the most life changing event so far in your career? The most life changing event is probably when I performed with Aretha Franklin on the 2008 Grammy. Um, I was 17 at the time, actually, when I played in the Grammys with the Franklin. Uh, I was 16 when I helped arrange the music for, for that, you know, portion of the Grammys. Um, I played with a brass ensemble, and I, I led, I had a lead trombone part. Um, so, yeah, that was definitely a life-changing event, and me being in, you know, me being a teenager in high school still, you know, what, what made it even more amazing. And, uh, and exciting. And that's something that you will always remember. Always, always remember. Not yeah, many I, people just, can say yeah. that they've met Aretha Franklin, but yeah. you played with her on stage. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, during COVID, and I ask this of all the artists, because I just want to know what everybody did. You know, when COVID shut down everything, when the pandemic yeah. shut down everything, what did you do to keep yourself sane during that time? I kept myself sane by by working on uh, working on music. I was actually working the album I'm coming out with right now. I was working on 
debt over COVID. Well, at least I kind of, I kind of started, you know, mm-hmm. kind of started on uh, my journey uh, uh, with that album, you know, during COVID. Also, I, I did my Christmas album as well. My Christmas album came out in December of 2020. But um, so I recorded, I, I recorded a lot of music. I, I practiced as well. Um, you know, I made plans for for the near future. And you know, I you know I just went back to the drawing board basically, and um, it was a reset opportunity, an opportunity to reset and, and and relearn, you know, and relearn things and and learn more, and learn more things and you know, uh, you know, network with people, meet people and stuff, um, and um, and I got a chance to I got a chance to work with some people over the pandemic like Althea Renee, uh, Lynn Roundtree. Okay. Uh, we, uh, I did a collaboration with both of those artists. They're on. They're on my Christmas album, a bona fide Christmas. Okay. Um. I got. Yeah. I got. A, yeah. I got a chance to. Uh. Got a chance to just just learn. You know, I, I learned, and um. I watched. I ain't gonna lie to you. I watched a lot of TV. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. Uh. You know. It, it was. Like it was an opportunity of 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 chilling that I don't get to now. I don't get to have now. You know. So. You know, me, I play gig just about every weekend. And, uh, you know, some days, like third, some days might be every day I'm doing something. You know, I might not, I might not get a chance to have that, have that break. But COVID, I had the break. Um, and, you know, I, I tried to make it, you know, turn it into a good experience, you know, for the time being. All right. Now, you mentioned that you, you worked with Althea Renee, you worked with Lynn Rauchy, who both, mm-hmm. you know, I know, um very well who would your dream collaboration be if you could and you also work with Gerald Albright which we're going to talk about later but who would your dream collaboration be um if you could pick anyone my dream collaboration is the Mississippi Mass Choir oh okay that's my dream collaboration um you know <laughs> um like it's one of my favorite groups uh you know I listen I set my Apple Music to the Mississippi Mass Choir, uh, and you know uh, one of my favorite bass guitar players uh, uh, played did recordings with the uh, Mississippi Mass Choir. Andrew uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Goucher, Andrew uh, Goucher, who's a uh, bass who's been a bass player for Shaka Khan and Anita Baker and stuff. Uh, he's playing on a lot of the Mississippi Mass Choir records. So you know, like it's that's one of my favorite groups. Uh, that's a dream collaboration. Another possible dream collaboration is um is uh Dave Cars. That's another one. Okay. Dave Cars and um uh Dave Cars, Naji, and uh and maybe one one more is maybe uh maybe maybe a hip hop artist, maybe a one of the old school hip hop artists, you know, like okay. you know, Paris one or one of them, one of those guys, you know. Uh, no, well, just just to it's it's my dream just to have a hip hop collaboration period with somebody, you know, whether they be big a big time artist, whether whether they be a local artist, and um, you know, just to do something a little outside the box. But yeah, it's it's a few people uh, I admire and that I love to collaborate with, and uh, I hopefully I get a chance to do that. And it's it's some people I didn't get a chance to collaborate with on this album that uh that you know I said I was gonna do it the next time. Mm-hmm. So some people I reached out to, I may have talked talked to briefly, and we didn't go through with things all the way. But a few of those people, um, you know, maybe I, I I would love to work with as well. So um, yeah, but it's it's a lot of, it's a lot of artists I got a I got a chance to work with. A dream collaboration. One of my dream collaborations with Gerald Albright, and then and and um, you know, I'm lucky that got a chance and to that happen. Happened. So yeah. And we're going to talk about that because I want to I want to move into your album. So you have, uh, was it three albums, right? Yeah, three albums. The Black Aquarius, mm-hmm. Press Essential Element, mm-hmm. A Bonafide Christmas, which is your Christmas album. And then you yeah. have another album that's going to be coming out um, entitled Beneath the Covers, correct? Mm-hmm. And that's yep. going to be coming out. But your latest single... And which we talked about Gerald Albright features Mr. Gerald Albright, and that's entitled mm-hmm. Keep Holding On. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, 
um keep holding on uh produced uh uh produced by uh, uh what's the name uh Lonnie Clark uh, it was a collaboration between myself and Lonnie Clark and um he came up with the lyrics and I came up with some of the lyrics as well and uh, he played the, he played some of the keyboard parts and I played the other keyboard parts um and you know um it, you know, it was a collaboration of great musicians. Sheldon Ferguson on the lead guitar, um, uh, Michael Blandon on the bass guitar, and Jeremy Wimbush on the drums. He played with people like Prince. I mean, not Prince. Um, he played with people like uh, Music Soul Child uh, and uh, Black Street and you know other artists. He's from the D.C. area originally. Uh, also, uh, I have. Uh, uh, it. I have auxiliary percussionist, um, um, Will, a, a guy named Will out of uh, Columbia. So um, it came about, you know, it was, I felt like I wanted to do something that was inspirational uh, and, and, and touch people's, you know, touch people's lives and stuff. And, you know, me, me being uh, out the church, um, you know, I wanted to, you know, go back to visit my, my you know, I guess my gospel roots and, you know, kind of do something you know that was different from what everybody else was doing or whatnot. So, I wanted to, I wanted to have that inspirational song. You know that was that would be a potential song for both markets. You know whether whether it be the smooth jazz market or whether it be the inspirational, you know contemporary gospel kind of markets or whatever. So, just something that everybody can listen to. Something uh, that has lyrics, just as well as uh, instrumental. You know. Um, instrumental uh, uh um melodic structure and stuff so you know just you know, it just uh, it was inspirational um inspirational song i want to i want to uh, let the world hear okay all right so can you just give us just a little snippet of so the audience can hear what you do just a little snippet can you just give us a little um appetizer like that okay, like I have a, well, a few more questions. Um, the first one is, what advice would you give a new artist coming into the industry? And I'm going to change this, especially for you, since you have your brother, right, following in your footsteps, right? Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give your brother coming into this industry? To don't give up. Work hard. You know, our hard work pays off. Um, be trustworthy, be dependable, um, be, you know, don't take no stuff. <laughs> mm, I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Wow. So what, if, what, um, projects do you have coming up? We know that you're working on your album. You just released your latest single and you're working mm -hmm. on your new album. What other things do we need to put on your schedule or my schedule? What should I put on my schedule um, to look um, out for? 
Well, my next event I got going on will be next Friday. I'll be at Blues Boulevard in Greenville, which is in the upstate of South Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, I'll be, not take that back, Abbeville next week at the Indigenous Underground. And then the week after that, I'll be in, in, um, in Greenville, both in the upstate region. Uh, uh, Blues Boulevard uh, in um, uh, actually, they'll be celebrating that one year anniversary for Indigenous Underground, and it's a black owned business. Um, by um, Erica, Erica uh, Mix here, she's the owner and she's the chef, the head chef of the place, too. So, big shout out to Erica. Uh, she always she had me come down there about a couple times out the year to play, to play for the people of Abbeville. Um, also, um, I'll be the 29th, after the 29th, I will be uh, in Atlanta on the 4th for the Sweet Lounge, Sweet Jazz Series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the Sweet Jazz Series. That will, uh, it features different people like, you know, Jock Kim Jordan, it featured out there Renee in the past. It featured some of the best in smooth jazz on that, as far as that show's, uh, show's concerned. And uh, shout out to Doc Robinson for having me be an artist there. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and uh, that next day I will be in Beach Island, which is in Augusta area. Uh, I'll be doing a one man show, a acoustic show. Um, I'm doing two shows there, just like, and I'm doing two shows in Greenville. Uh, I'll be in the main course that sun uh, that Sunday. So I have a three, I have just about a, almost a three day weekend with the well, uh, I got I have a private engagement that Saturday, but I'll be you know pretty much doing it back to back to back from Thursday to Sunday. Uh, I'll be in Savannah at Good, at Good Times Jazz Lounge. Uh, that's going to be on August the 26th. And, and uh, I'm still, I have, a, I have a few more shows that's pending. Okay. Um, or whatnot. And, uh, and I'm, I'm in the process of scheduling my album release shows. I probably do an album release I probably start those in September sometime. Okay. Um, but you know, I'm just I, I just haven't made that move yet because because I'm kind of um I, well I, I can't really I I feel like I can't really make that move until the mastering the album has been mastered at least. Right. You know, so once the once the album is in the mastering process, I can then plan for the album release shows, and those are gonna be those are gonna be pretty fun. Okay. Now, where can people go to to find your music? Really quickly, wherever we're running out of time. They can find it on Apple Music, Spotify. Um, you can find it on YouTube. Pretty much any in every platform of choice, you can find it on. All right. Um, yeah, all three albums and and, uh, and the singles I have as well. Well, you heard that to my audience. Hank, it has been a pleasure to have you here on the show. I'm definitely going to bring you back, and I'm definitely going to try and bring you here to Hawaii because you know they need to hear that sound. You know, Let they, me know. They really need to hear you. They really need to hear you. But thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule, and it's late at night where you are. But thank you uh, for being here, and to my audience, thank you for tuning in. And until next time, aloha and God bless. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.